And um, my mom, though, <laughs> beat those odds, and she had six kids. So she, um, it, it was a miracle that she had that many at that time. However, again, very complicated. Her sixth child, um, she almost died. And um, my brother had a couple transfusions. It was time. And Dr. Victorino, who had um, birthed several of her children, told her no more. You were, you, you were tying your tubes, you're gonna die if you have any more children, you can't do this any longer, Margie. So that happened, and about a year later, she went back to the doctor, Dr. Victorino. I feel kicking, I feel movement, um, and, and he said absolutely not. They took the test or whatever they did, and she was being taken in for a tumor. Only to be wheeled out, um, and said, I told you so, my mom screaming, and she was pregnant again. Um, it, uh, the doctor sat her down, about five doctors, and said, you know, Margie, you can't have this baby. It's going to be death, dumb, retarded, your tubes screw back together, we don't know how that happened, um, and it would be best to abort this child. And um, knowing my mom's history and everything she, she'd been through, she said, I cannot do that. I, I can't give this baby up, I feel movement. So at that time, Dr. Victorino was, uh, said he would adopt the baby and take care of it. Him and his wife could not have children. And um, he said, whatever happens, I will, I will take on the child. And um, that was the agreement. So I could be up here, <laughs> the much different story, being a only child of a doctor. But that's not the story. So um, she kept me. Um, I was barely five pounds. And um, she didn't come home with me though. She stayed there for several weeks. Um, I guess a neighbor um, took me in and, and I was in a little box, you know, in, in, in a drawer, it was so small. But she took care of me and um, I made it. As you can see, there's only a few things wrong with me. You'll get to know me and see that. Um, but I was, uh, I'm lucky number seven. I'm the seventh child in my family and um, it's my mom that gives me the example of being brave, being strong, and sacrificing for others. So, oh, here we go. Oh, okay. So, that's my mom. My mom did remarry. She married my dad, who made the other half of me, because he is, um, he was off the boat from Italy, self-made man, general contractor. When he asked my mom out, she was a waitress, and um, she kept saying no, 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 no. And she said, fine, if you can find a babysitter for my seven children, I'll go out with you. Well, <laughs> well he did. And uh, so they stayed together for several years until he passed in 1999. But he too gave me an example of never quitting. Um, he was, we were inseparable, uh, him and I. And he was a, a great example of what a great man is. And so from there, um, I, I went to college. I was the first one of the seven to go to college and um, always wanted to work with kids at risk. Um, I did, I'm very, very dyslexic, so school was never easy for me. Um, but again, you just don't quit. So I went on to college, I got my teaching credential, and I started working with Sylvan Learning Centers. And that's helping kids that are, you know, sometimes very, very behind. And it was very, very, um, uh, it, it, I know we were making a difference. And I actually grew that school to be the number one in the nation out of 1,100 centers, wow. just for the care and the love of the students. And I went on to be the center director, of course, and then moved up to um, a district manager, uh, running the biggest nation, um, biggest um, district in the nation of 10 schools in the Houston area. But at that time, it was when my dad was really ill, and um, I had to move you know, away from home. I was moving to Utah. Didn't know anybody, you know, being brave, and uh, I wanted the challenge, but he was very ill. And so I went to see him, it was my going away party, and I love this story because um, this is how close we were, and I said, and it's your going away party too. So I went to pick him up, I was real close with the nurses at the, at the home, and gave him some money and some things, and so they let me take him out, even though he wasn't allowed to go. He had to, had to uh, have a uh, leg amputated, he had had several stro strokes, he wasn't, really speaking, he was on a tube, but my mom would not let him go. And I knew I needed to give him permission. So the whole family was there. Um, there's about 27 grandchildren at this point. And um, we had a big party. And then he died the next day. So, but it was, I was, I was holding his hand. It was, it was a blessing, it was time. And so, but I moved. 
and um, continued on with um, supplementary education for a few more years, and then I um, moved on to become a campus president. And at that time, which was long ago, about 16 years ago, there wasn't very many women in that role. So it was an interesting time um, to learn leadership, servant leadership, and to I went to Houston and actually opened a brand new college out there, and um, it was interesting coming from California, the different mindset. So in that time though, after my bachelor's and, and uh, getting a K through 12 education, I, I challenged myself to get my MBA, and I did so in organizational psychology, very much enjoyed that. I am a closet nerd. Um, and then I also went on for my second master's and got that in compliance and ethics with the forensic accounting certificate, because that's necessary. Um, and, uh, and then also then I'm happy to say that I finished my doctorate last week. Yeah. I've been in school for the last seven years, so I don't know what to do without having homework. Um, but I want to do those things, um, one, because I love to learn, because it wasn't ever easy, um, and two, I want to continue to challenge myself. So um, that's kind of a summary of what got me here to you today, but also, oh, I'm doing it wrong, yeah. That's my tribe. Um, my daughter is 13 years old, and, and we've moved a bit for my for my job. Um, she's she's much more athletic than I am. She's 13 and wears size of 11 and a half shoes, so I think she might be a little tall. Um, and she got the support kitten Molly when we got here because she needed that. Um, uh, we moved here about seven months ago, and then of course my partner in crime, Chris. And I have a very big family. Most of them are still in California. I have a sister in Kansas. Um, we're all still very close. And um, we have my mom to thank for that. So basically, I mean, we, we, we all share. We come here for fellowship. We come here to make friends. We come to give back. And we all have our reasons why we do that. You know, it's personal. Um, and mine is my mom. Because without her, I would not be here for her bravery, for all she gave, and who she still is to this day. These are some of her. One thing that when uh, growing up, we were, we were redoing a bathroom, and she decided that um, during that time, she'd write positive sayings all over the wall, so that when you would use the restroom, you would be looking and reading at all these things um, to encourage yourself, because she really um, is about a positive mindset um, and really giving back and, and always giving the best of yourself, living a very purposeful life. And given that she, sacrifice to have me here today. I try to do that on a daily basis. So the reason I'm here is because of my mom. Thank you for listening. That's awesome. And you didn't say what you're doing now. You're president of Kaiser University here in Lakeland. That's what brought her here. So this is so you guys will know that. So today is awesome. So our next guest speaker is Derek Oxford, and he was brought in by uh, Rock Self. St. Joe's, I don't 
no, it's no. The, the church that I grew up in wasn't around yet, St. John Newman, but um, baptized at St. Joe's and also learned how to swim at Florida Southern College. The original pool, not the one that's there now, if anybody remembers that, it had like a, like a stair step all the way down to the pool itself with a huge diving board that I had to learn how to swim across. Uh, as well as the old Kelly Wreck Pool, if anybody remembers the old Kelly Wreck Pool, the one where the parking lot is now, um, not where Gandhi is now. So uh, enjoyed that, and then uh, I'll talk a little bit more about Florida Southern swimming in a second, but <coughs> quickly, just a diverse background for myself. So I'm half Mexican, half American, um, but uh, my background is uh, pretty, pretty neat. Uh, on my dad's side, who's the, uh, the white guy. Um, <laughs> so uh, obviously my, la my last name is Oxford. It's a very um, well-known name, and um, I can prove that uh, I'm from the original lineage um, of the Oxfords, actually all the way back to the Battle of Hastings. So that's a little, uh, a little picture of uh, one of the original uh, tapestries there. Uh, so I can go back all the way to the Domesday Book and find my name in there. Oh, not my name, but my family's name, of course. But um, I was telling uh, I was telling my other presenters earlier that uh, uh, we sided with Cromwell um, back in the day in England. If anybody remembers? Oh my gosh, history! Uh, we sided with Cromwell instead of the uh, King of England, so uh, he took all of our land and money. And uh, so we, uh, we 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 went to the colonies, right? That's what they call it. Uh, so we went to the colonies and uh, in the 1600s, and which is where this book starts, uh, but the other books do exist, um, and uh, went in and hated the king, of course, hated the king. So uh, we signed up for the Revolutionary War, and so that is an original picture of uh, one of my great descendants, Samuel Oxford, signing up to be a soldier in the Revolutionary War. Oh, I apologize. That's uh, me, I believe it. Uh, my mom's mom. And uh, that's me, of course, with my blonde hair. I was born a blonde, so all blonde jokes, they have <laughs> Career moves, I uh, grew up here and uh, went to George Jenkins High School, so it's always fun to say that. Here's the, you know, the, uh, the origination of Publix. And I say, oh yeah, you know who founded Publix? You know, from people from other states, and they have no idea. Uh, but, of course, George Jenkins, and uh, it was fun to go there. Even when I went to Florida Southern College, I stayed in the Jenkins Commons. Uh, so, I have to enjoy that. But, I um, went to Florida Southern, actually, with a physics degree. Uh, I clubbed all the way through Calc 3, because I just love math uh, and history, of course. Um, but, I realized that uh, I wasn't smart enough to have a degree in physics, because only the very smartest go and work for NASA. And uh, my advisor at the time was an Iranian physicist. And uh, he he just said, you know, Derek, you're a great guy, but uh, you're not smart enough. <laughs> I said, okay, well, what else can I do with math? Uh, so I switched majors to finance and um, really liked the financial markets and then realized that Florida Southern just wasn't wasn't big enough to provide classes necessary to do exactly what I wanted to do, which was financial markets. So uh, my advisor at the time uh, said I need to go to a big university. So Florida State it was. <laughs> um, I went there. Uh, actually, so went to Florida Southern for physics, but actually I also was on the swim team there. So Division II uh, was actually the first swim team there. Um, somehow, I don't know how that happened, but uh, I was on the original swim team there, and then when I transferred to Florida State, I walked on the team there as well. Uh, so I went from Division Two to Division One, and uh, did not get a scholarship, but uh, it was fun to be able to be on the team. After Florida State, I uh, went to go work for Merrill Lynch in Jacksonville as one of the institutional traders there, so I was one of four institutional traders for the entire country, uh, handling billions of dollars every day. That was really fun for about a year and a half, and I got burnt out. Uh, it's very stressful, even though it's not your money. You know that it's somebody's money, and uh, you didn't want to make a mistake. So I switched over to Fidelity Investments, which was right next door, and uh, worked in their back office as well. 
And then, of course, as I said before, uh, then switched over to CPS. Investment Advisors, where I've been since 2008. So talk about changing jobs in 2008 in the financial industry. Um, so if anybody doesn't know what 2008 was, it was our great recession. And uh, that was fun. That was fun. My firm lost, I think CPS lost about, I don't know, $100 million that year, um, which was about a third of their assets in total. So um, it's great now. We're at $1.3 billion, so you got to love that. Um, moving on. Now I have to talk about my family because a lot of what I do for the community uh, is because of my family. So I grew up here. I uh, want to give back to the community any way I can as I can, and I'm thankful for CPS for allowing me to get out about and do those things, especially during working hours, so that way I have time to see my family in the evenings. Um, so that's uh, my family there, my beautiful wife Tiffany, she's a teacher at McKeel. Uh, she's actually teaching seventh grade science at the high school level. Um, if you know about McKeel, it's kind of weird that way. They've got one school that goes from K through eight, Central, which goes through K through 6, and then the high school goes 7 to 12, so it's a little strange, but uh, she's been there for a few years now, and that, of course, is my son, Cullen. Uh, he is uh, 9 as of this past Monday, yesterday, and uh, my daughter, Kinsley, who just turned 7. So Cullen is uh, uh, very smart, so I love reading, and I've got him into reading, and so he's finishing his third year now and is reading at a seventh grade level, so I have to love that. Uh, my daughter is the athletic one, so she gets my athletic prowess. And uh, she, but she's also smart, of course. Uh, that, that's her with all of her state medals for gymnastics. Uh, so she does very well. She's a pint-sized little, you know, bulldog. Uh, wrestles my, her two-year-old older brother to the ground all the time. Uh, which is hilarious. Uh, of course, uh, I, I can't uh, talk about my family without, uh, of course, any family picture we have, but if you ever see any brochures for Bob Tower, you will see my family on them. Um, I signed up for some free family pictures, and I had no idea when I was signing off, when I was signing that piece of paper saying, hey, you want some free family photos? Come over here, and we'll take some pictures of you. Um, You'll see coupons with my face on it. Uh, it's pretty hilarious. Uh, I, I had no idea what I was getting into. Uh, <laughs> there was even a billboard with my daughter's face on it for the uh, children's uh, playground that they built there. Uh, and then uh, I do have, I have to say it, of course. Now Kim, Kim knows me well. because She was in my leadership in class. Best class ever, 33. Um, that uh, I had some male modeling background. Uh, and so I just did some modeling recently for a wonderful woman in town near Kariskin who has her own um, business as a consultant for brand imaging, which is either personal or business related. So I was happy to do that. Uh, I am very active, love being out outdoors and doing different things, and I love to keep my family involved. Uh, as I said, I, I swam all through high school, all through college. I still swim two to three days a week now. Uh, that's me with Rowdy Gaines there. Um, I got to know him pretty well. Uh, my kids uh, also enjoy getting out and about. And there's them at a, a Spartan race a couple of months ago. And then uh, we've got some Rotarians in here that are on my private uh, Savage Race group team. Corey and Power, where you are? Where you are, Corey? There you are. Corey, he's a beast. Uh, you wouldn't know it by his age at all. He can, he can really move. Um, so he's been in my group. Luis Rivas, who's in South Rotary, uh, who's been to Honduras a lot for, uh, for our groups. Um, he's wonderful. And then, of course, the famous Matt Brown uh, was also on our team for a, a short stint, but he's still there in heart. I see you. <laughs> so we've got some great guys on our team, and uh, we love to have fun. We do it two to three times a year, and it's a great time. Uh, I try to be involved. Again, I, I really want to give back. I almost hated myself when I saw all of these things that I was a part of. And I thought to myself, wow, do I have time to actually work or have a family? But you do. You find time, you make time. Uh, and it works. And whatever I can do to give back, I want to do that. So I appreciate anybody who's in any of these organizations that has allowed me to help out. That's me. More to come, of course. I'm so young, but uh, at the same time, I, uh, you know, 
I, I want to be able to get back. So again, hopefully I will see you out in the community and of course helping out Rotary. Thank you. Speedway, which owns a bunch of the tracks, so it's kind of you know kind of a neat, uh, fortuitous thing. Um, my grandma Key on the right, uh, that's my mom's mom. Um, she probably her biggest <laughs> tangible, great woman, biggest tangible um, legacy for our family was this 1940s lake cabin that she bought late in life in Hickory, North Carolina, um, and uh, and we grew up uh, as kids spending uh, a ton of time there in the summers, learned to ski, love for boating. Uh, it's still one of my, you know, my happy places. Um, another fun fact, just learned, the Oxfords have a uh, centuries-old buried treasure at, really on a ridge near Lake Hickory, and there's an Oxford dam which dams up the lake named after his family. So, small world. Um, but this is me kind of over the years at, at the lake. So I, uh, my parents went to UNC. Uh, we're kind of full-fledged UNC Tar Heels. Um, really fun growing up in the Triangle in Raleigh, um, Durham and Chapel Hill with Duke, Carolina, and State. Um, as you can see, you know, kind of a neat picture, I was at Carolina basketball camp um, with Dean Smith, and I didn't have Derek's physique or natural athletic abilities, so I ended up deciding after that um, that uh, it was kind of similar to his physics um, talk. You know, I think Dean whispered in my ear, just become a fan. And so, uh, so I did that very well uh, and still, still do that great today. Since, since that time, we've won four national championships, so I think it's pretty good. All right, so quick, I know we're running out of time, but a quick, quick game. So um, two truths and a lie. We'll just go really fast. Uh, or just raise your hand which one you think the lie is. So was, you think it's a lie that I was a DJ in high school? Right, okay, we got some. Okay, uh, launched a website company the same year as Mark Zuckerberg. Anyone think that's a lie? A lot of people think that's a lie. 
Um, he played drums with Lakeland's own Johnny Diaz at one time. Anyone know Johnny Diaz? I know Pastor Mike does. All right, so fun fact is all of, all of those are actually true. So I was, I was a DJ in high school. Uh, my name was BC Sounds. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, there, there, there are shirts if you want some. Um, I, I, did, I did launch a website um, yeah, the same year as Facebook, uh, but I'm here talking to you and building warehouses, and um, so you can probably guess where that went. And, uh, and the Johnny Diaz story, I'll go through it quickly, but um, so he, he's uh, had a great career in Christian music, but one year at a, a Presbyterian summer camp, um, the first Pres band he led it was, was leading worship. Their drummer couldn't make it, and so they asked me to step in and play drums. And so, um, so I, I got a chance to do that, and, and, uh, and, and that's when there was this 10th grade um, girl from Lakeland named Lauren Ruthven, she's in the back corner, um, who, uh, that she picked that time to become a Brandon Clark groupie for life. So, um, you know, she'll say, you know, she liked one of my friends better than me at the time, and um, she'll also then say that she did she picked UNC because she wanted mild weather, but I think it was all sunny. And she doesn't have a mic right now, so she can't. Just be <laughs> so we've had a we've had a great. We've been married for just under 11 years. Um, we lived in Atlanta, uh, then Winter Park, and then moved here last summer. Um, you know, we've traveled all around the world. Um, I, will, I will also point out, fun fact, the, the picture in the bottom right is, um, is her family and me at, um, at the Ruthven Castle in Scotland, which is worth a Wikipedia um, search sometime. We actually have, her family has a similar, um, a similar history um, not liking the king. They actually kidnapped the king. Um, and, uh, and so that didn't go great either. Um, <laughs> So about six years ago, we started adding to the crew, and so uh, this, this is our current crew. Um, uh, Georgia is six years old. She's at Lincoln Avenue Academy. Um, Mary Charlotte is our middle one, and, uh, and she's three. She goes to uh, first prize for, for preschool. And then Sutton is our little guy. He's a year and a half, and he basically just walks around uh, Lake Hollingsworth and Lake Morton and plays with the ducks and the swans. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and so we, we um, just really quickly, because I know we're at the end, um, we moved to Lakeland for lots of reasons. Uh, my job was one, family was a, was a key one for us, uh, having our kids be able to grow up with their grandparents and, um, and, and others. You know, a big piece of it for Lauren and I, though, was um, the the magnitude that her family over the years has given back to the community and the investment that they've had in the community and us being asked by the you know by our family to come back and, and continue that for our generation and and um, you know that more than anything is what really moved us to be here and and that more than anything is really why I enjoy being part of, of Rotary with all of you um, you know it's the service above self it's the um, you know it's the community but it's also um, you know, making sure and encouraging ourselves to, to be better people. Um, so thank you for, you know, for allowing me you know, uh, uh, into the club and, uh, and for, for allowing uh, um, us and welcoming us into the, into the community. Uh, I will, one last thing. So I don't know if anyone saw this on April Fool's um, uh, a couple weeks ago. But my wife is a, a consummate April Fool's prankster. So, um, so she actually had this sign made, put it on our, uh, in front of our office building, um, as if I was rebranding the company. So, uh, I don't think that would be the smartest move, um, but, uh, but anyway, just wanted, just wanted to disclaim that in front of everybody, that that's not happening. Um, but also, keep an eye out on her uh, for, for next year. So she's always up to something good, but thank y'all. Thank you all. Once again, this always proves to be one of the best programs we have all year long, so thank you for sharing with us. Brandon, if you'll do me one favor, if you all decide to have one more daughter, just please name her Lewis Ann. <laughs> Lewis Ann Clark would be just perfect. <laughs>